The other day I saw this very interesting result here that cos of 5 theta is equal to 16 cos to the 5 theta minus 20 cos cubed theta plus 5 cos theta. Now I sat there wondering for a while how did we get to this result here and it wasn't for a while until I realized that this is simply from an application of de Moivre's theorem. Now I'm certainly butchering that name, uh, I am terrible with my French, but de Moivre's theorem. So what that states is that cos of x plus i sine of x when raised to some integer power n is always going to be equal to cos nx plus i sine nx. Okay, so how does that actually help us now trying to prove this result here? So what we know is that well, if we're working in powers of 5 and we have a cos of 5 theta, then presumably that means that our n value is going to be 5. So the first thing we should do is quickly see what this will be when we replace n with 5. So looking at this bracketed term on the left-hand side, we now have cos of x plus i sine x all to the power of 5. Okay, and now this is simply just going to be a binomial expansion. So whether you need to you know, use your calculator for that or if you're comfortable with Pascal's triangle. Either way is completely fine, but we're going to go ahead and expand this out. And there we go. So quite a lengthy result here. So what we can do now is we can have a quick look at our left-hand side and see, well, the way that we can now write that out is similarly going to be written out as cos of 5x plus i sine of 5x, and this is just according to de Marvre's theorem. So now I can replace the left-hand side with cos of 5 theta plus i sine of 5 theta, and I've just noticed we should have been using theta in here for our problem. So what we notice is that is going to be equal to the entire right-hand side in the above expression. However, in our original problem, we're only interested in showing that cos of 5 theta is equal to all well, the following expressions here. So what we notice there is that they're all real values and they're all written in terms of cos. So what that tells us now is that we can go through and straight up get rid of all of those imaginary components. So now what we can say is that cos of 5 theta can simply be written out as cos to the 5 theta plus, well, 5i cos, nope, that's imaginary, that will disappear. Now the next non-real, sorry, the next real term is going to be minus 10 cos cubed theta sine squared theta. Then we have another imaginary term down here and then another real term over here. So that's going to be plus 5 cos theta sine to the 4 theta. Okay, fantastic. So now we're getting there. It's certainly looking a lot more approachable than what we had earlier. But now again, we have a little bit of a problem here. We have it written out in terms of sine squared thetas and sine to the four theta in here. And we know that we just want it in powers of cosine. So what we can now use is the fact that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. So simply I can now write out sine squared theta as one minus cosine squared of theta. And so if that's sine squared theta, then what would sine to the 4 theta be? Well, that would be like writing out sine squared theta all squared, or essentially 1 minus cos squared theta all squared, which is going to give us a value of 1 minus 2 cos squared theta plus cos of 4, so cos to the 4 theta. Okay, so now we have those two values there for sine squared theta and sine, squ sorry, sine squared theta squared. So now we can substitute those values back into this formula over here, and then we'll see what we get. So now we can write it out as... So now all we need to do is just simply expand these brackets and see what we get. So the right-hand side will now become cos to the 5 theta minus 10 cos cubed theta, then plus 10 cos to the 5 theta, and that's that first term expanded, and now we have 5 cos theta times 1, so it's just going to be plus 5 cos theta. 
5 cos theta times minus 2 cos squared theta. That's going to give us minus 10 cos cubed theta. And then 5 cos theta times by cos to the 4 theta. That will simply give us 5 cos to the 5 theta. Okay, so now quickly collecting like terms, we've got cos to the 5 theta plus 10 cos to the 5 theta plus 5 cos to the 5 theta. So that's going to give us 16 cos to the 5 theta. And now looking at our cubic powers, we have minus 10 cos cubed theta and minus 10 cos cubed theta. So that's minus 20 cos cubed theta. And then simply left over, we have a plus 5 cos theta. And there we go. So that is how you can show that cos of 5 theta is equal to 16 cos to the power of 5 theta minus 20 cos cubed theta plus 5 cos theta. So quite a bit of work going into that in terms of our, our binomial expansions and getting that problem written out nice and succinctly there at the end. And there we have it. So that's how you can expand that using De Marvre's theorem. So if you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe and comment if you'd like to and let me know what you'd like me to cover in the future. Appreciate it. See you next time.